Hi, my name's Kat and you're watching Cat Rose Astrology. So today I've got a video about the new moon in Pisces, which is coming up shortly. As always, this is a recording, a bit of a snippet preview of one of our astrology meetups. This is part of my community, the Astrology Circle. If you'd like to learn more about that, just go to my website, catroseastrology.com. You'll see more information about the different kind of things that we host on your Astrology Circle. So this is everything from uh, new moon, full moon meetups, astrology forecast meetups, uh, and in these meetings, I stop recording once we start getting into the details about people's charts. But if you're interested in discussing your chart, uh, also bringing, if you're a practicing astrologer, bringing other charts that you're working on or like celebrity charts to workshop with myself and a group of other astrologers from all around the world, then you can partake in our chart workshops. Um, I've got one of those coming up, I think, this weekend. So if you'd like to learn more about that, just go to catroseastrology.com and you'll see a little link to your astrology circle um, in the navigation. All right, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, so why don't we just get started with um, looking at the context for this new moon. So I like to go about a week before the new moon, this new moon in Pisces, which by the way, I should state, say that up front, it's coming through at uh, um, one degree of Pisces on the 20th of February. So I'm going to just flash back a little bit to the 13th of Feb. Uh, so that was this Monday or thereabouts um, with the last quarter moon. So let's have a look. So if this is the last quarter moon in Scorpio. Um, generally, I mean, this is kind of just a recap of what I was talking about, the last full moon and what we were leading into. Uh, so this, you know, you have to say that this is where the moon has fallen. Uh, so generally speaking, not a good time for lunar things in general. Um, not a good time for like, you know, the, the sort of what I call it, like the kind of cuddly, cozy side of the moon, the the nurturing side. Um, it wasn't a bad moon, though, for getting work done. So she was also, and I'll get into to that a little bit more with that sun approaching Saturn. She was also in a trine to Venus and Neptune. So that that kind of softened this moon a little bit, well, a lot, really. Um, like I said, the sun is approaching the conjunction with Saturn. So that's kind of what the moon was highlighting at this point. If you think about the the, the moon as a, as a translator of light, uh, the moon is really shining a light on what the sun was doing. Well, you know, the sun is technically shining a light on the moon, but you know what I mean. So uh, it, it, was, it wasn't the worst thing, but... Sun conjunct Saturn, when the sun is in its detriment, uh, can really be a time when our egos are put in check. We're really kind of forced to cast a kind of a cold critical eye on ourselves, on our world, like how we kind of fit in with things, particularly with the sun being an Aquarius. What I was reflecting on with this is that there could have been an upside to this. Um, you know, a last quarter moon generally isn't an easy time, but I like this idea of, uh, let's say there was something around being socially accepted, right? That's a, a, a potential Aquarian theme. Um, with the last quarter moon speaking to letting go, uh, like almost like sloughing off the stuff in, in, of that last moon cycle that we don't want to bring into the new cycle going forward. So it could be realizing that, okay, well, this person isn't going to accept me, you know, this part of me, or I'm never going to fit in with this, um, this group or this way of life. It's kind of those accepting accepting moments where you kind of just have to say, oh, I can't be that that shiny light or that um, my ego can't be projected in, in such a way that I uh, that I want. So that's kind of what I was I was seeing with this 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 moon, this last quarter moon. Um, I, know, I noted here, um, when you realize that there's no way to please Saturn, Saturn will always like demand more of us, let's say. You know, it wants things to be better, harder, faster, stronger, all, all, all the things that Saturn asks for us. When we realize that we can't ever like um, meet that that standard, we realize that we're free to do and be whatever we want. So that was kind of my take on this this moon. Uh, I'll tell you know, I'll tell you that I spent the day revamping my website, which Again, I hadn't really looked at the astrology for this, but it ended up, I think, speaking to it quite well with that kind of sun Saturn side where you're like, oh, I want this to be perfect. I want it to be great. But fundamentally, there, there's no way of, of that, of me attaining that that vision that I have. So let me just kind of park the ego at the door and just, just get it done. Also, Moon Trine Venus, that's kind of a nice thing for doing visual stuff. So hopefully that went well. Um, 
I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll be open to people's take on it. So um, why don't I just pause there? Does, any, does anyone have any reflections? Because this is only a few days ago, um, and we might even still be feeling the effects from this this waning moon. How how is people's Monday? Did the week start okay with the moon in Scorpio? Feel free to unmute yourself if you if you like. I felt like there was a lot of um, there were a lot of things that got dredged up with the moon in Scorpio. Deep things that I had ignored and thought that I'd you know gotten over um, to a certain extent, and of course Valentine's Day came, and that can be triggering in some ways for a lot of us um, here in the states. And um, yeah, yeah, it was pretty intense. I was thinking back to the full moon in Leo though as well, and um, I've often heard you know the association of Leo with the father. And there was a lot of discussion between me and my mom, who was in the hospital at the time, about my dad, who has passed away um, almost three, four years ago. And um, yeah, a lot just coming up um, for clearing. And um, I still feel like I'm getting over that as we approach the Pisces new moon. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's been interesting to talk about. Um, be curious what what sign, what house that was happening in for you, Chris, because... Um, yeah, I hadn't mentioned that, but I guess with any of these moons, you are looking at like the mother figure, the moon and the father figure of the sun. They're always going to be kind of playing out or they have the potential to play out on any of them. Um, I love that quality of the moon in Scorpio. I don't always want to accept it, but the dredging up that you were talking about, um, it's like, it's a gift and it's just, it's just not easy medicine a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I have to go back and check on the house again. I did at one point, but I'm a cancer rising. So, oh, yeah. okay, so that's yes. Fine. Yeah, in whole sign, that would be the fifth house. But um, yeah, you could look at other house systems as well. Uh, yes. Um, okay, and anyone else? I rise cancer too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we've got yeah. a lot of um, cancer rising. <laughs> yeah, and so I was thinking about, um, it was right on my Neptune. I have Scorpio, Neptune at that degree. And so I was having a conversation with my son, fifth house, I guess, children. And it was not combative at all, um, but it was one of those conversations like, we need to really talk. And we're always like, go, you know, goofy and joking around. He's 16. And Mars, to me, being in that Gemini house has, has been just like... Um, I know probably like a broken record, but I'm like, it's intricate. It's like a, a um, like surgery in my brain. Cause it's in the 12th house. Like everything's just constantly overthinking, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I finally just took a deep breath and I said, we need to have a talk about, you know, you going back to your dad's and what that all means. Mm -hmm. And it was good. It was all great, but it was that conversation. I felt like Mercury and Aquarius right now for me um, is kind of, you know, coming to that pivotal point where you have to have that conversation. And so that's what was coming up. And then my daughter's birthday was the next day on Valentine's and we were all together. So it's been a lot about my kids this week. That was, and are they both Aquarians? I think. You yeah. Yeah. Both, yeah. yeah. So. Jack, Jack's just had a full moon. Oh, wow. Fifth. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's like the first two weeks is like all about my kids in February. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that, uh, it get, I see, I think a theme that's kind of coming out here is that ability that the moon has in that last quarter to just take us to where is necessary, but not necessarily where we would go on our own, if, if that makes sense. Sorry. Yeah. You know, it, I'm glad you mentioned that because I went back and I am a third quarter moon when I was born. And so it's, it's definitely something that I understand so mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel that way. Like if you come back to that moon, I know you said when you come back to your Sag moon, you're like, uh, I don't know if that. Um... Yeah. I don't like the moon returning to the sign, but I like the moon returning to the phase. So as mm -hmm. you said, like that last, yeah, I'm fine with the phase. <laughs> yeah. It's familiar. It is familiar. Not, not my favorite, but you know. Um, okay. So why don't we get into this new moon? Um, uh, so this is coming up on 
the Monday the 20th. I've got it here in the morning in the UK, but it's going to vary depending on where you are. So that's at one degree of Pisces. So we've got a series of these really early degree new moons. So just generally speaking, the very like broad brushstrokes is, okay, we've got this lovely new moon in Pisces. That sounds nice. Um, given that uh, we are thinking about the classic Piscean themes of possibilities, dreams, visions, as well as um, what we deem as meaningful uh, that has purpose, what is the highest good that we can act at, our beliefs, our faith, what we ha can hang our hat on. These are all some of the themes, which in theory, that's a really nice place for the new moon themes of new starts, seeding something new, uh, setting intentions. But I would say, I mean, I've seen a lot of astrologers paint this in quite a, a, a very positive light, which that's fine. That's great. It's nice that this actually does happen before Venus um, at least here, it happens before Venus moves into Aries. Though what I'm looking at and what I always look at with these lunations is what's the ruler saying about this? And that is Jupiter. It's nice to have a lunation ruled by Jupiter, the greater benefic, but it can't see, it's not able to aspect this, um, this new moon. So that just means that the kind of support that we would really hope for this new moon isn't quite there. Um, it's not nothing. It's I'm still going to look at what Jupiter means in Aries, and this is kind of where it gets more interesting. So if I think with the, the Aries energy coming through, and keep in mind that Venus is literally just the very last moment, she's, she's going to move into Aries, basically under this new moon. Um, that is a sign of her detriment. And one way that I've been seeing that, and I won't go too into it now because I was when I was preparing the notes, I just went off on a whole spiel about Venus and Aries, and I was like, that's that's not this new moon. Um, but the idea that a planet in its detriment isn't bad, it's just inappropriate. So Venus in Aries, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, just being loud when you're meant to be quiet, or you know, the image that I had was playing darts in a fancy restaurant. Like you, you just wouldn't normally do that unless it's this kind of quirky concept place um so it's the it's almost like the naivety of Aries is kind of what I'm thinking about um as an Aries sun I can definitely speak to this it's that kind of like kind of it's a very green sign in that way it's not the the world weary um Capricorn or something it's that sense that um, you're going to start new things with um, vigor and enthusiasm, but there's also maybe a little bit of naivety there as well. So with Jupiter there, where all of our like enthusiasm is just um, really just been turned up to the max, with this new moon, things that we're visioning or even uh, kicking off under this new moon, they might have a sense of just being a little bit undercooked, a little bit like not not fully developed. Like oh, I, that was a great idea, but. I could have really just used a, a few more weeks, a few more months, years even to think about it. So just keeping that in mind, it's a little bit of like a headstrong toddler kind of new moon, I think. Um, I think it's a fine moon for manifesting in that the, it, you know, Saturn isn't blocking it in any way. That's kind of nice to not have an aspect from Saturn. The Mars um, square is pretty wide. It's a, it's it's far off enough in in Gemini that I'm not super worried about it also in the inferior position to this new moon um so it's it's like it's a green light but it's also one that we might uh things that get started under this new moon might also just need a little bit more work so that's just kind of good to keep in mind um i'll get into the tarot card and then we can i'm going to open up to the, to the floor you know what you all have to say um so the tarot card for this deck is the Eight of Cups. Okay, that's not like the happiest looking card. Um, in theory, it's the idea that somebody is turning away from maybe something they've invested in quite a lot. Uh, it's it's sadness, it's disappointment. But the only route forward, uh, it's it, it speaks to the only route forward if we really want to start something um, new, if we really want to pursue our dreams, our hopes, our, our mission. Uh, so in that way, it could be letting go of any hangups that might be holding us back. Um, you know, at, the, at first glance, this is kind of, you, you could say this is the card of the quitter. Uh, it's, you know, it's this guy who's turning away. Maybe he could have just spent a bit more time and I don't know, whatever he was trying to do, finish a, 
a sculpture of, of cups or something. Um, but actually, it takes a lot of strength to turn your back on something, to cut your losses. I think there's that cognitive bias, um, the sunk cost fallacy, where people will just like keep at something, uh, even though you know it's not paying off. Like me and my partner were watching a TV show, and we've watched like several series uh, seasons of it, um, and then it just started getting really poor. Like the writing uh, got terrible, and um, he really wanted to keep going with it because he was like, but we've invested so much time in it. And I'm like, we don't owe anything to these characters. It's okay. We can stop watching it. There are plenty of other things to watch. So yeah, sometimes we, we need to do what, what this guy's doing. Um, so how to see this in the, in the light of this new moon? Well, I, I'm thinking about this just being a necessary step. Um, this kind of walking away piece, cutting our losses in order to move forward, um, which might speak really more to the time that we're recording we're meeting today, which is um, at the balsamic moon. The moon's in Capricorn, I believe. And this, this is the day of the sun Saturn conjunction, I think. So it, this is very much reflecting that kind of endings, cutting away loss, uh, but in order to start something new. And Pisces, Pisces isn't a sign that clings to the past. It's, you know, there might be um, hesitancy to move forward. And we've got the classic image of the, the fish swimming in two directions. Um, but there is, there is at least part of us is willing to move forward. And I'm just wondering about what it is that we're going to need to walk into this, um, this new cycle. Uh, I also think having that, you know, Jupiter and Aries, Venus is going to be entering Aries, got a couple of lunations happening in Aries, um, one being an eclipse coming up. So all signs are pointing to new beginnings and like almost like a new epoch is, is coming through. Um, but that doesn't happen without like some endings, some walking away to, to things. So um, I'm just going to pause there and, and open the floor. Uh, any comments on either the tarot card and or the this new moon? So the Deccan is Saturn. So oh, to me, it, 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 so there's like a really cool uh, symmetry. I think we had mentioned it last time you and I had talked about it or in the last moon circle, we were talking about how there is that connection with Saturn and then Venus is going into um, Aries. But at first I forget the connection, but it was something like she was connecting to Venus somehow. Uh, or or Saturn, Saturn and Venus were were connected. I think it's when uh, Venus was in Aquarius, yeah. Yeah. and so in that last lunation or something like that. But it just reminds me like they're switching, you know, decans, and so I think Venus and Saturn work really well in a sense. You know, kind of the way I feel like. I mean, I have a square in my chart with my Venus and Saturn, and I've always had a a a feeling like this. So I really relate a lot to this card. And I was reading Susan Chang's book on this 36 secrets. Do you have that book? I want it. Oh, look at that. It's oh, right. my God. It is. Yeah, it's, a new book it, 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 yeah. it's my go to book. <laughs> but I love it because it is the world and it's the moon. So it's kind of like the last of the major arcana. It's like all the fixed signs coming together to really give you that persistent, you know, kind of energy. But to me, it was like moving in silence. I've always seen this card like really one of my favorites because I love Pisces, but I also think that it's like the last of this wintry crap going on here, you know, going into the spring. So it is just like you said, it is new and it feels vibrant, but it also feels like you said, somber. And that's really what Venus might be experiencing in the sign of Aries. Um, in a way, I mean, she's going to be there with um, Jupiter, but then there's Chiron. So then we got that, you know, some, some wounds, but we have to heal before we can move forward in a sense, or at least it's simultaneously. So that's what this card reminds me of. And um, yeah, it's like, I don't know if those are empty. I mean, I look at it like, is that my baggage? Is that the crap that I, you know, or the stuff that I've been filling up for years? Or is it just my emotions that I just need to leave there for a moment? And so it's a really cool reflection. I, I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah. It, oh, sorry. Who's? No, please keep going. <laughs> oh, no. I, I was just thinking about um, 
uh, yeah, the Venus speak, speaks really loudly here just because of that quite distinct movement into Pis- uh, into Aries and how you're kind of making me see this this card in a more um, positive light was that and I'm thinking about like the wisdom of Pisces there is a kind of somberness to that you know I mean if you've got any people in your life with like strong Pisces placements it's not um the kind of happy-go-lucky nature of Sag Jupiter's other sign there's definitely like a kind of I don't know I always feel like it's a um more of a wistfulness let's say that's one word I could use for it um and an acceptance of things and this is very much a card of acceptance so I think it's it's that's good that's like kind of the wisdom that hopefully Venus can kind of take into this this uh the Aries part which I've been painting as like this really like kind of like stupid and naive like version of things but no I I have loads of good things to say about Aries so I <laughs> I don't mean to um it's just it's a it's a switch isn't it it really is from going is. for exaltation into her detriment it's it's quite a, an interesting it's one it is but then about, again, i'm sorry go ahead uh, i was just about to say you mentioned that book. i was actually st- struggling through it as you were speaking because um it mentions the dark night of the soul in in it uh, and quotes from it, which ironically is um, I have Venus and Saturn still conjunct my natal at the moment, coming out of the second Saturn return. And I have actually been studying <laughs> that poem, The Dark Night of the Soul, a number of authors. And I just sort of, it's something I think it's quite often misrepresented. It's not just about doom and gloom. It's more about a spiritual transformation getting to a point where the things that you, uh, you know, obviously a religious text, you know, a person might have been getting great joy out of praying or whatever it was because you know, um, John of the Cross was a Catholic, and then all of those things suddenly don't give you the same result and it's compared to um, a child being weaned. You have to grow up what you've been used to no longer can be used for you to spiritually grow further. And so that's certainly where I feel I'm at at the moment. And, you know, I've gone through this two years of incredible deep reflection and now I'm coming into a Jupiter uh, return. So it'll be interesting to see what what transpires next. Wow, yeah, and you're almost making me think, Ryan, about um, these cups being that stuff that, once worked for this this nice person in the red cloak um but now isn't so it's like well i don't need to cling on to them it would be much um easier if i just if i just choose a new cup <laughs> basically um that next one is the nine so yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so cool because then you sit down and you have like this accolade behind you and The fact that I think those eight cups you bring back in a sense, it's like you're bringing it back into a different perspective. And then Saturn's going to be there March 7th, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like Venus is saying, everyone's like saying, here comes Saturn, Saturn's, you know, coming through in March. I don't know. I'm a little dramatic, but it just feels like that. And so that's that, I think that was the correlation in my mind. Now it's coming to me, but yeah, that first decan, you know what I mean? Like Saturn's coming through. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And what he just said was amazing because that whole thing about transformation, spiritual man, that. Yeah. Well, there's some excellent, I've been reading, I don't you know, mirror by star. The Jewish lady, but she went, she wrote a book on the dark night of the soul. And on the very day that it was published, her daughter died. Wow. Her doctor daughter. And um, as she, um, she'd been brought up in a pretty much in a cult and been used by its leader and stuff. Jewish background, but a family were all in this hippie movement. And then she ended out, now she's associated with she's agnostic. She's often associated with a Hindu guru, the same guy that Ram Dass we used to follow. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, you know, she, when she got out of that, she started studying Spanish, and then started studying studying the Spanish Christian mystics, and that's what got her out of the incredible drama of having her daughter, her daughter die in horrendous circumstances. Wow. 
Yeah, and that um that theme that you brought brought up, Brian, the Dark Knight of the Soul. I think this is. I, I feel like that's going to be a, one of the major themes with Saturn in Pisces, and it, but also the, like the gifts of that. If, if I mean, that sounds a bit trite. It sounds really trite, but um, yeah, there are gifts. Well, there is a gift, but it uh, it goes what, whatever you relied on and thought was it, it's. So I suppose it's like you're a teenager. You're all, everything's exciting, but then if you're going to grow up, you've got to let go of a lot of things to actually be very yeah. forward. Or rediscover them in different ways, as, as that was mm. saying with the, the yeah. cards. Um, okay, so why don't we have a look at what's ahead? Um, brilliant. So this is the, the first quarter moon that will be coming through in about a week, a week after. That's the 27th of February. Um, so... This is that opening square. So now the moon is a, like a square ahead of the sun. Um, eight degrees of Gemini. It's that eight coming up again. I know this has kind of been like a run, running theme. Um, I keep like obsessing over the eight. Uh, anyway, so, and yeah, Venus is eight degrees as well. So what I'm looking at here is a couple of things. So one thing being the ruler Mercury is coming up to that conjunction with Saturn. So it's almost like, that's great. Mercury's in a loose trying to this moon can certainly support what the moon wants, but it's also getting a roadblock from Saturn. Um, and the moon is also coming into that conjunction with Mars. So there is a kind of an edge to this first quarter moon. Um, and what I'm thinking about here is a real sense of defiance. Like, I think we're really like, um, like geared up. I think that would be the the kind of feeling tone that I'm getting from this first quarter, which isn't uncommon for a first quarter moon. They tend to be quite young and like forward moving, um, at least in intention, but not necessarily in, in reality. It's also, it's the rubber meeting the road. It's uh, the vision meeting the reality of life. I can also see that like exuberance and enthusiasm and like uh wanting to move forwardness of the venus jupiter and aries and yet we're kind of moving into these kind of malefic territories so i'm thinking about that sense of defiance you know i'm going to get what i want come hell or high water come, come saturn or mars uh, i'll find a way and i think that if we didn't already feel kind of a bit stuck in the mud or just blocked i don't necessarily feel like this is stuck or stagnant energy so much as it is um literally just like running headlong into it into a brick wall and being like ow that that hurt uh, i didn't expect that that said there might be help coming along the way and i say that because there is that really tight sextile coming in from venus a uh, loose one from jupiter so like support is on its way there is definitely a sense that um ultimately the path is good, the path is right, but we just might need to overcome the classic, you know, first quarter moon blockade, blockade, as it, is it blockade or blockade? T tomato, tomato. Um, yeah. So, so uh, that's kind of, it's quite a straightforward first quarter moon in that, in that way. Um, I think just, yeah, being aware of, of the initial uh, blocks to it would be helpful. Any more insights on that? Other than the obvious that I've just pointed out. Yeah, I was just going to drop another example um, of what's been going on in my life that's corresponded to all of this. And with the Eight of Cups card, too, um, found myself in a um, romantic situation and then realizing I can't get there from here. Mm -hmm. And so seeing, you know, um, a past uh, habit of mine come up and a lot of it very Venus and Pisces, a lot of Neptune influence in there and illusion and then breaking through that and, and walking away uh, from that in order to get somewhere different. And it's, it's almost like I can see myself in that first quarter moon uh, with that feeling of defiance. Like I'm going to defy this past hatter, this, mm -hmm. this past habit. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting, Chris. I wonder if, um, if any of that was playing out during the Mercury retrograde in Capricorn, because that would have been your seventh house. Um, I don't know about you, but I definitely like that Mercury retrograde for me in the seventh house was very much like having to negotiate stuff with relationships. And it's like, that might not be very external. That can be an internal thing as well. 
um, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, it does make sense. And to me, the first word that comes up is like that restriction, which I know is Saturnian, but for some reason with that retrograde, yeah, there was a sense of like um, preparation mm -hmm. and, and thinking about the situation. And, uh, and here it's starting to, to play out, however that plays out. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I, I definitely it. had a lot of um, the uh, the Mercury and Pluto that oh, happened over I, the I past gonna... weekend was a powerful moment for me. And <laughs> it's hilarious when you actually, you know that it's coming up and you're like, well, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. And you, you just do it. Yeah. Anyways, you know, you let something be known in my case, you know, rather strongly. And you're like, my God, how can I just see this coming? And yet at the same time, just it, it did. It felt like it had to be there yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. Once we finish recording, I've got a Mercury Blues any story for everyone. That was that was gnarly. <laughs> um, yes. Any other thoughts on this? Uh on this first quarter moon or just new moon in general? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to move straight on before we finished on that. Yeah, I was thinking about like Mars when he was talking about that um, in Gemini. And then it's going to be finally out of the, I guess, the degrees that it started. So it just started like at what, 25 or something like that? So it was, it's going to be a few more weeks, right? Before we're out of the shadow or whatever. Um, and so I feel like we're still revisiting or going through now in a different way, if that makes sense, you know, going through the, the Mars Gemini event placement. Yeah. So there is a lot of that for us cancer risings, you know, still going through that, you know, um, for me, it's not so much loss. There's so much depth. You know, but it's it is very drowning feeling and like so overwhelming in a sense. But it's so cool because I can compartmentalize with that kind of Gemini energy, mm -hmm. um, especially when Mercury was in, I guess now with Saturn, I get a little bit more serious about what I'm doing. So when he was saying that, that was triggering for me was Mars going back. Yeah, it's been interesting. I know that um, so Monday the moon was moving through the uh, opposition with Mars and like all the moon Mars stuff for me has just been like, oh, like just can we be done with it? But it's interesting seeing the the third run that Mars makes over those degrees, you know, for everyone, it's going to be happening in different places and you know, God bless all the Gemini risings. Cause I know that you guys have it um, speaking very loudly in a very personal way. And um, it, it's just interesting seeing, all right, this is what it looks like in forward momentum, but we're, we're still dealing with the same, stuff that you know started back in what well, like halloween basically um they're about so yeah <laughs> we've made it so far we're, we're almost done you um, would think we're done but i always go back to saturn i know it's like the fulcrum do you ever see saturn like that like especially with this with this configuration here it just reminds me of like uh, it comes back to saturn you know with the whole thing which is great because you know beginning in the end and that's uh, the vibe going into even the Cancer Moon, and then having the full Moon in, in Virgo. To me, there's a connection with that. And it, it's, I mean, it's all good. It's relative. But um, it's yeah, it's funny. I, th I always think astrologers, um, like Mercury, I think was the planet that like most closely related to astrologers. But really, people who are, are into astrology seem to end up being like, no, it's, it's Saturn. Like it's yeah, Saturn's, yeah. Saturn's our man because it's you know the Lord of Time, and that's kind of what we're we're studying um okay shall i I'll, I'll wrap things up for now and um we'll we can get into some charts okay i hope that was helpful as i mentioned earlier if you'd like to join these meetups live and attend all the different events that i have as part of your astrology circle you can do that just go to catroseastrology.com and you'll find more information there as always, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate any likes, subscribes to this channel, uh, telling a friend, all of that good stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll catch you next time.